let us discuss line differential protection. Before entering into a detailed discussion about the necessity of differential protection on a high voltage transmission line, we will now discuss the basic principle of line differential protection, what its typicalities mean, and how it differs from general differential protection. Say, this is the bus of substation A. On the right hand side of the screen, this is the bus of substation B. A transmission line, as shown, connects the bus of substation A and substation B. The circuit breakers of substation A and substation B are shown here as CBA and CBB, respectively. Now, we add current transformers in the diagram. CTA is the current transformer at substation A, and CTB is the current transformer at substation B. Both of the current transformers are connected after the circuit breakers, as shown. This means both the current transformers are line-side current transformers. Here you see, we have connected P1 terminal of CTA towards the bus of substation A. Similarly, we have connected P1 terminal of CTB towards the bus of substation B. This is the general convention followed by the maximum number of utilities. That means we normally connect P1 primary terminal of all current transformers towards the substation bus. Now, we shall draw line differential relays with the current transformers. The relay activates the tripping of associated circuit breakers. Line differential relays are generally numbered as 87L. The differential relay at both ends of the transmission line is connected to an optical fiber. OPGW is used for this purpose. Suppose there is a fault on bus A. The current due to this fault will pass through the transmission line. Suppose I suffix A is the primary current flowing through CTA and I suffix B is the primary current flowing through CTB. Say, the fault current is I suffix F passing through the transmission line. So, IF equals IA equals IB. Now see, the fault current enters through terminal P2 and leaves through terminal P1 at the current transformer A. But in the current transformer B, the fault current enters through P1 and leaves through P2. So, with respect to the primary polarity of the CT, the direction of current through CTA is opposite to the direction of current through CTB. That means the current through CTA is 180 degrees apart from the current through CTB. Therefore, IA plus IB equals zero. This is nothing but the sum of currents entering and leaving the transmission line is zero. This is nothing but Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL, which states that the sum of currents entering and leaving a node is zero. Now suppose there is a fault occurring at a point between CTA and CTB on the transmission line. In that case, say this is a short circuit or an earth fault. Here, the fault current enters at terminal P1 and leaves through terminal P2 at CTA. At the same time, at CTB, the current also enters through P1 terminal and leaves through terminal P2. That means, in respect of the polarities of the CTS, the direction of both currents is the same. So we can write IA equals IF1 and IB equals IF2. So IA plus IB equals IF1 plus IF2. And this is non-zero as the direction of both currents is the same. Now come to the differential relays. Relay A receives the current signal from CTA. That means it receives the current signal IA from CTA. Now for the differential mechanism of the relay, it needs the current from CTB also. Actually, CTB receives the current signal IB from CTB. This signal is converted to an optical signal and transmitted to relay A through OPGW. Now, at relay A, the optical signal is reconverted for comparison with the IA signal. If IA plus IB not equal to zero, the relay will actuate and will send a trip signal to the circuit breaker A. Similarly, relay B receives the current signal IB from CTB. 
Relay B sends the current signal IB to Relay A through the OPGW. On the other hand, Relay B receives IA signal from Relay A via OPGW means optical ground wire connected via peaks of the transmission towers. Here, the relay compares current signals IA and IB. Since the current IA plus IB does not equal zero, therefore, relay B will actuate and send a trip signal to open circuit breaker B. Therefore, by tripping circuit breakers A and B, the transmission line will be isolated. The entire tripping, a tripping from both sides, occurs instantly at the same time. The entire tripping process will take 17 milliseconds to 22 milliseconds to complete. So we have seen, due to any fault outside the transmission line, i.e. beyond the protection CTs on both sides, no tripping of the circuit breakers will happen. This means the transmission line will not be isolated from the system. But for a fault within the transmission line, there will be an isolation of the transmission line from both sides, and that is very fast and instantaneous. Now we shall discuss how the currents are compared in the relay. It is obvious that there will be a small time delay between receiving and sending the current signals. Consider relay A. The current signal from CTA will reach the relay much faster than the signal from CTB. Because for reaching CTB current of current transformer B, it is converted and reconverted as we have discussed. For this conversion and then propagation through the communication OPGW and then reconversion, the signal coming from the far end will cause a delay in current signal from the far end. Therefore, comparison of current signals from both CTs will not be possible correctly. To overcome this, differential relays adopt methods to ensure accuracy. The relays use synchronized measurement. Suppose the red sinusoidal wave represents the replica of the primary current of CTA. If we draw the green sinusoidal wave of CTB at relay A, it will be in negative. Now, the green sinusoidal wave represents the replica of the primary current of CTB at relay A. Here, you see there is a time delay of the green wave with respect to the red wave. Again, I say, this delay is due to the propagation time of the green wave from relay B to relay A. Now, if both currents are the same, but still during comparison, there may be errors. This may cause a malfunction of relay A and it can trip the associated circuit breaker unnecessarily. This difficulty is eliminated by using synchronized measurements. Here, both relays use a common time reference. For that, the relays normally use GPS, which provides precise timestamps. Each relay samples the current waveform at its end at the same instant as the other. Actually, the relays must compare the currents measured at the same instant. To achieve this, they use a common time reference such as GPS to synchronize their internal clocks. This ensures that the sampled currents from both relays correspond to the same moment. Each relay sends this sampled current data along with timestamps to the other relay. Each relay then compares the data using their timestamps, not on the basis of the actual instant of receiving the data from the far end relay. In this way, the timestamps allow relays to align measurements even if there is a communication delay. This was the very basic working principle of line differential protection scheme. If you really got some clear idea, please subscribe our channel so that we can be inspired to make more such interesting videos.